Hello, it's JP from Web, and in today's video, we are going to see how to recreate these skeleton loaders using the CSS animation editor. Skeleton loaders can take many shapes and form depending on your content, but their goal remains the same. They are here to indicate that the data is being fetched or processed in the background, making the wait easier. So let's see how to recreate that in Web. We are going to need a parent div. First, we can we can rename that skeleton loader, and we we'll give it a fixed dimension. I'm going to add a bit of border radius and a background color. Let's give it a light gray. And inside of that skeleton loader, we're going to add a new div. And that will be our shimmer. The shimmer element will have a relative dimension of 100% to 100%. So that way it fills the dimension of the parent. We are doing this because we want the shimmer component to be relative to the size of its parent. So that when we change the size of the skeleton loader, the shimmer will work exactly as we want it to be. So now on our shimmer, we want to add a gradient color. So let's jump to the gradient property. And if we go here, we can add three colors. The first color to the far left here will be white to a opacity of zero. We can do the same for the last color. And the middle one would be a white to 100% opacity. You can hit OK. And now you can see that we have our white gradient. You can really see it well. So let me darken the gray a bit. And what we want to do now is to add the animation on the shimmer. So we want the shimmer to go from left to right in a circle, in a loop. And also we want the shimmer to go out of bound so to each end. To do that, we can go to the animation section. And so for the duration, we can hit 1200 milliseconds. The transition can be linear and we'll keep it to the infinite iterations. And if we open the keyframes, at the beginning, we want a translate of minus 100 percent at the end of the animation so 100 percent of the animation we want a translate of 100 percent the other side and if we try this on we can see that the animation is moving from left to right and if we hit preview we can see that it's behaving exactly like we want but let me just duplicate that and make it horizontal and add a little bit of gap. Now we can see that there is, if I duplicate the elements, there is something strange happening here. And that's because the shimmer is actually going out of bound of our elements and overlapping on the second one here. So what we need to do is to tell the skeleton loader to hide everything that goes out of bound of this element. To do that, we need to go to the overflow property and hide everything that's going out of bound. So if you do that on both the elements, we can see now it's a bit, it's a way more smooth. So you notice that I needed to do the modification on both of these skeletons if I wanted to make a change. And a better way to do that would be to transform this skeleton loader into a component so that every modification that we make on the master component will be reflected to each of the instances. To do that, I can just hit new component here and rename that skeleton loader, hit create. So now I can just duplicate this instance 
and it will be the same component each time. And now what I can do is go back to my skeleton and just lighten the, the gray a bit so that it's uh, nicer to the eye. And if I hit preview again, then we have this nice skeleton loader. And what you can do now that we have everything set up is that we can duplicate this skeleton loader. If I grab the two first and um, put them inside of a flex box, I can just grab the second one and change its height. So for instance, 20 pixels and add a little bit of wall gap. So now I have this nice group of skeleton loaders that can look like any content that we have. So if you try to use that in context, what you usually want to do is to first group every uh, skeleton loaders. And on the parent wrapper of the skeleton, what you want to do usually is to bind the conditional rendering to a boolean and the boolean can be linked to your collection and on your collection you have some booleans that we can use to condition the display of our skeleton and on our case we can bind it to the is fetching variable so that means that every time your collection is fetching then we want to display the skeleton loader so that's how you create a skeleton loader and how to use it with a collection. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you on the next one.